Welcome to the February 2022 Las Vegas Real Estate Report. My name is Jan O'Brien, and I have the great pleasure of being a co-team leader with this great group of folks who are your local area experts covering the entire valley. Make sure you reach out to one of our professionals to help you with all your real estate needs. This is what I want to cover today on our monthly report. As always, I'm going to cover the Las Vegas area stats for January, what's happened with all the key stats and pricing and what um, you can anticipate maybe coming in the future uh, by way of looking at some national housing trends. It always impacts all of us across the country, no matter where you are, what's happening nationally. I do want to talk about increasing mortgage interest rates and how dynamic that is and talk a little bit about how that affects your purchasing power. And I have some tips for you on navigating the current market whether you're a seller, buyer, or both. All right, let's dive in and look at the housing snapshot for January for the Las Vegas area. Another record break in median sales price, 435. Okay, we were at 425 as we ended the year in 2021 in January sales. The median sales price for single family, which is smack dab in the middle of these 2,561 units sold. Uh, it was 435,000. That is up 26% from last January. All right. It continues to be mind boggling how the prices continue to go up. And it's really, as I talk about all the time, if you follow this report, monthly report, it's a combination of huge buyer demand from everyone from people who are moving to the area, first time home buyers to corporate you know, private equity firms um, and entities purchasing up homes. That's what's happening. There are so many people that are in the market. It's not just necessarily low inventory. I'm going to show you that in a minute. There, There's the sense of there's not enough on the market and that's the availability. It's because properties that are coming on the market that are look great, are priced right, are selling quickly. And since so many people are interested, it's inflating the prices, the multiple offers, the bidding wars, are driving the prices up. And we're going to continue to see this uh, in the coming months, maybe even through the year. Now, can it, can we sustain another 20 to 25% appreciation? I just don't know. It's certainly pushing um, the average home buyer out of, of the, uh, the opportunity to purchase. And the, and the sad part about that is the rates on rentals are still higher, if not higher. I mean, in most cases, it costs more to rent a property right now than it would be to get a loan if you're qualified for it because the interest rates are still, you know, going to be around four or lower than four or probably higher than four eventually, but they are definitely fluctuating. All right. So we had a similar amount of listings that came on the market. That's the point that I'm making. So a year ago, we're up 2% of the number of new listings that came on the market in January. January is traditionally a month that we we see a lot of uh, properties come on the market, people coming through the holidays and so forth. But the units available, that means what was available at the end of the month when they took this snapshot, the Association of Realtors, it's down 21%, 1821, because of the number of sales, as I'll show you here in a moment. Condos also, 243, that is a new record median sales price. Less than a half a month supply uh, for sing uh, condos and townhomes and a little over that for um, single family. So let's take a look at the number of closing. And I, I put this up to give perspective and you'll notice how it goes up and down. That's the seasonality curve. It's never the exact same amount of homes closed on any given month. It, it goes with the season. It goes with different things that are happening in a particular market. And this is what it looks like for the Las Vegas market. So what I want to point out, though, is you can see the the actual sales were down month over month. That would be December, this next line here. But you can see even through last year, we had, if we just look at the line going all the way across, we had you know, high numbers of closings. Okay. So that's not indicative of there's less houses to choose. There's just more sales happening, which then creates the, uh, the reality of there's not a lot to, to choose if you're not able to purchase right away when a new property comes on the market. So you can see 19% down month from January, to, from December to January, but only 3% down compared to January of last year for the number of closings. And this chart, of course, back from 2015 is just showing how that median sales price was, you know, back in 2015 for properties in a single family 
in the Las Vegas area was just right around 200,000. And here we are, fast forward to January 2021, where it's 435,000 as a median sales price. Cash sales, 30% of all sales in January. That's up 21% compared to January of last year. But on the other side of that, that means, you know, 70% uh, were not cash. You know, at the height of the downturn, the Great Recession, this was 50, 60, even more percent of the homes sold were cash. So it's not as bad as that. And the other thing I like to track is foreclosures and, and short sales. They continue to be uh, low. 0.8% of all sales. And this just really does show what's happened. And, and the reason why we have low foreclosure activity is the moratorium that went on during the pandemic. Lenders still working with people, people trying to work stuff out. And honestly, the biggest reason why we're not seeing a huge uptick is because people have equity. They have equity in their home. And even if they haven't been making their payments, they more than likely are going to be in ability in a situation that they can sell their home and not be upside down or not be in a foreclosure. Now, uh, as as uh, this fo folks here at CoreLogic are saying, there will be an uptick from extraordinary low levels. It's going to take a little while for the banks to continue to sort things out with the homeowners. The moratorium did end in July, but we're still seeing these really low rates of um, and these are foreclosure activities, meaning filings from mortgage companies filing something that goes into the public record, you can see this was the height of the recession right in here. And, um, you know, it took a minute for the foreclosures to all come on the market here, but from jump up to 208, 209, 210, 2.9 million foreclosure filings. And we're at 151,000 last year, right? And 214 the year before, but that's about half of what it would be pre-pandemic, right? 493, 624, and so on. So we're going to see a little uptick, but it's not going to be tons of foreclosures and short sales on the market anytime soon. Now, homeownership as a hedge against inflation, this is an interesting graph to show you through the decades that what this is the inflation rate from the 70s. Okay, we're, we're back at the 70s numbers right now and what it was through the years, and then compared to the home price appreciation for that decade. And you can see here um, in 2020, and then we go to 2020 and 2021, we're around 1.4% of the CPI here, the consumer price uh, increasing uh, in the inflation rate rather. Um, and now here we are at this snapshot 6.8, a little bit higher even. And appreciation is still solid. Um, home prices are staying solid. And also back to being a rent, renting versus owning. The a benefit during inflationary times is that when you have a 30-year, even a 15-year mortgage, you have a fixed amount that you're paying on the principal and interest. Yes, the taxes and insurance can fluctuate, but your principal and interest are going to remain the same. You can't say the same thing in the rental market because you may have a one-year um, lease and then you can always, no matter what's happening, the lease, the lease will generally in, in increase up. And right now we're just seeing really huge increases because that is what the market will bear. Now, mortgage rates, projections have been showing that maybe by the second, third quarter would be at 4%. But this is, as I record this, it's February 15th right now. This is straight off of Mortgage News Daily that tracks the rates in real time and and uh, this is uh, and this is comparing it to the Mortgage Bankers Association of Freddie Mac. And this takes them a minute to catch up because they're surveying um, the different outlets and then reporting it. This uh, these guys basically take a look at the rate sheets from all across the country in real time and then they're reporting it. And what is impacting the rates? Well, it's a lot of things. It's it's what's happening in the economy. It's what's happening in the world events, all kinds of things can it can uh, fluctuate with the market. And then the you'll see the mortgage rates bounce around. And so they're already effective today. Now, it doesn't mean it couldn't come down a little bit, but this, this is just showing where they have been. So if we just kind of look since December, okay? So since December, we were right around what, 3.25, 33. And you can see the fluctuations even in a day-to-day -day going up and down a little bit. But in the recent couple of weeks here, we've seen it shoot up from about three and a half to four percent as I record this today. But let's put that into perspective. You know, we don't we don't need to freak out that the interest rates at four percent. But I will show you in the next chart how it does impact your purchasing power. Um, but this historically is just showing you back from 2016. All right, here we are. The rate the rate interest rates were over here. So right back here it was in the fours, right? 
dipped down a little bit between threes and fours. It ticked up here over four, up to five in 2019. And then we've seen this steady down, a little tick up here again, uh, flattened out pretty pretty good here until I just, uh, the, here's the chart here again, moving up now in 2022. Okay, now what does that do to your purchasing power? Again, I've mentioned that um, the fixed rate mortgage is, is good to know that when you're in that, the principal and interest is gonna remain the same. You can't say the same thing if you're renting, you know you're good for the lease of your, the term of your lease. Now what this chart simply says that if you're, if you're in the, if you're, depends on what the situation is. So when you're qualified for a mortgage, you may be having the lender uh, tell you your max payment can be X, $2,500 for example. Now, why this is important to, to be, really be talking to your real estate professional as well as a great lender is to help manage this is that just to I'll use the example of if you want to keep your principal and interest around 2000, let's just say right around 2000, then we'll add taxes and insurance and maybe you have an HOA fee or mortgage insurance, but just for the sake of of comparing apples to apples right now. So if you're able to get 3.75, interest rate and you wanted to keep your principal interest right around this 2000 2100 uh, 2038 right here then you you have the ability to buy to get a loan for 440,000 a loan amount that's the loan amount now add your your down payment to that and that'll be your sales price but now it just goes up a half a point let's go from 375 to 4.25 so let's track over here and we see that if we want if it goes up to 4.25 you know, we're, we're basically going to need to, um, we lose $20,000 in purchasing power is one way to look at that. Okay. Now you may be okay making a bigger payment. And I just want you to be able to see that this chart helps you recognize that. And the, we have other tools that can help you with realizing, you know, what can you afford based on an interest rate moving a quarter point, half point, and so on, which is reality right now. They're fluctuating a little bit. They're at four point one, two, I think, the, as I looked at that chart, but it, tomorrow they could drop down just a little bit again. Okay, so maybe in, you know, uh, micro adjustments. Okay, that brings me to where I just want to take a moment and talk about if you're a buyer in this market. So we are clearly in a seller's market. I love this chart because it shows back since 1999 where we were in a seller's market. The last buyer's market happened in the Great Recession, right? When we had all those foreclosure activities started happening in here and short sales and so forth, and it lasted through this time period. And now we've been in this seller's market and this is lower down into the months of inventory, right? So a neutral market is six to seven months. Anything that's less than six months is considered a seller's market. And I just showed you with you, we're under a one month inventory for both single family and condo. So we're in, continue to be in a strong seller's market. We've been in a seller's market for years, okay? Now, if you are a buyer's a buyer trying to buy, or even if you're a seller thinking of selling and you want to be able to buy, or here are some tips for you. Speed, it, being time, every time is of the essence. And what I mean by that is if you're ready to purchase, you've got to get ready first, which means you need to be pre-approved if you're going to get a loan. And that have you talk to our lender if you're if you're reaching out to us, but you have to have the power of being fully pre-approved to be able to put the best potential offer forward in a multiple offer situation if that's what you're having to deal with. If you are a buyer going to use cash, you have to have proof of funds. No one's even going to consider looking at your offer without that. And by speed, I mean that you, you have all these things ready to go and you are ready to write that offer and get in the mix. The next thing that you can do as a buyer is have competitive terms. Okay, so you meet everything from a higher earnest money deposit. If they're asking for 2000 put 5000 down. If you really want the property, you're protected in contingencies for um, you know uh, being able to have due diligence and a home inspection and a couple other things that we can speak to you specifically on. But if you're certain, a higher earnest money deposit tells the seller that. So does a higher down payment. If you have the ability to be able to put more money down, um, that just, sig just signals a stronger buyer. You can shorten up an inspection period instead of waiting for two weeks to get all the inspections and stuff done. We can work with someone and get that done within seven days or 10 days. And then another thing that's happening is people who are willing to pay what's called the appraisal gap. Or maybe even if you put enough money down, you may even be able to work with the lender to waive the appraisal. Obviously, if you're cash, you can, you're not having an appraisal done. 
Um, these are all terms that are going to be favorable to the seller. We're in a seller's market, and that's how we have to be competitive. Um, so uh, appraisal gap is being willing to pay a certain amount over appraised value if if it's the property that you really want. Now, brand new listings versus you know longer on the market. The, the other thing that I, I like to set people's expectation, everyone that is wanting to buy, no matter where you are, you're generally on a website. It could be one of our websites. It might be Zillow or Realtor.com, wherever you like getting the information about where listings are coming up. And if you've been on the market for a while, you are watching that. You're taking a look at anything that new that comes on the market. So is your real estate agent. And when that new shiny, beautiful listing that's been renovated comes on the market, it's you look at it, and especially if the pictures are great, you're saying, I want that property. Well, just be aware that Everyone wants that property, everybody that's looking for that. And so if you're not willing to be competitive and have everything ready to go, you're just going to be in that bidding war. So we're starting to see more properties stay on the market a little bit longer if they have been overpriced. Now, sellers are making adjustments and they're you know, hoping that the market is a feeding frenzy. So I can just put this, you know, even though I haven't done any renovations to my house or it needs work, I'm still going to put it on this high price. Well, some buyers aren't going for that, and we're seeing some properties stay on the market a little bit more. So it might be worth looking at those properties. So get with your real estate professional and help get some help on identifying properties that might be prime for being able to get an offer accepted. And it really does take patience and perseverance. And if you're in the game, just hang in there and you know you just have to keep writing the offers and keep finding that opportunity. Uh, and, and the right property will come along for you in the long run, okay? That is that is our hope for you. Now, if you're a seller, it is important also, as I just mentioned, uh, making sure your property is prepared. And, and for us, it's preparing the property as a process so that it looks awesome, so that it can be that when the, your property hits the market with our team, you know, we're all about professional photography and video and leveraging that because everyone looks at the photos. It amazes me how many listings I look at. And I know if you're watching this and you've been looking at properties, you know what I'm talking about. You're like, how can that, how did they let those photos get up there? Or somebody's using their phone and they're taking photos like this because the market's so hot. Huge mistake and a disservice to sellers. We believe that you've got to have great quality photos and your job as a seller is, and we're going to help you if you're thinking of selling, what you have to do to get your house ready for showings, okay, ready for great photography. And there may be a few things that you can do to your property that we could advise you on staging wise to simple things to just increase that value and get in that competitive way. And we'll talk to you about that list price strategies, whether you're right at the market to create that that uh, multiple bidding scenario, uh, always, always never be overpriced. You can maybe be in some cases priced a little bit, just depending on the situation and, and create a, a whole different strategy because we're starting to see more people, uh, depending on uh, the location and so forth, come in a little bit lower, all right? And marketing definitely matters as well as being able to stage uh, or, or go through the multiple offer situation and what makes a great offer. And what makes a great offer is the terms. It can be the price. Obviously, it's the terms, but it's also making sure we have a buyer that really can and is willing, ready, willing and able to make go through with the purchase. And a lot of that has to do with working well with the other real estate agent. I'm starting to see a trend and I'm seeing it uh, across the country, as a matter of fact, because you're starting to see some, some things change with some listing agents where people are so uh, quick to put an offer in that they're not even looking at the properties and then they lock the property up. Then they change their mind or they actually come out and see it, maybe from another state, and then they cancel, which they can do in that due diligence period. That I'm seeing a trend happening with where properties are on the market, they're off the market, they're on the market, they're off the market. So we'll be aware of that as well. And that's another way that we can, we as a seller, we'll help you be aware of that by vetting out that buyer and working with that other agent because we want to be able to accept an offer that is going to close, that's actually going to actually close. All right. So uh, a couple tips for you there. Again, reach out to one of our local area experts. Uh, my name's Jan O'Brien. I'm here every month giving you the latest and greatest information about what's happening in the Las Vegas area. You can follow us on YouTube, subscribe to our channel. Our team is always putting out great videos about areas and 
uh, homes and, and um, different things that are happening in the Vegas area, home tours, as well as communities and so forth, as well as this market report. And you can find us on social Living Las Vegas and Henderson on Instagram, Facebook, and on YouTube. So until next month, have a great time. Uh, if you're in this market, hang in there, persevere if you're a buyer. Uh, this too shall pass eventually. See you next month.